Let's start. Um, good morning. I hope you're not stuck in traffic this morning. And don't wake up too early to come here. Um, I want to say, guys who sit this side, we show some code on screen, and maybe it will be hard for you to see it if you're not sitting on this side. If you want to move, please move. Uh, anyway, let's start. Um, uh, first, we want some legal disclaimer <coughs> and safe harvesting, uh, which means that what we show uh, uh, is uh, our plans for future. It's intended only for information, and it can be any contract based on this. Intel and Oracle work uh, for many years already, and in this presentation, we talk about some optimization we did together to improve code generation in GDK 10 and 11. And we will talk more about what uh, Intel plan to improve beyond just vectorization and new instruction generation. First, I want to say that we are very proud about very active and dedicated OpenJK developers community we are forming for long years. Uh, I remember that we start working with Intel uh, closely on improved performance of Java in 2007. Even uh, it's the year we opened uh, Java for world and since then, uh, a lot of other companies joined OpenGDK community. I listed a few of them on this slide. Before we jump to 10 and 11, uh, I want to say several words about GDK 9. I would call it its unfortunate release because we worked on it for almost four years. There was major changes and minor improvement we done there, uh, but it was unfortunately that it lives only for six months uh, due to new uh, release model Oracle adopted to release GDK each, uh, new version of GDK each six months. So I want to list it features which was put into GDK 9 so people know that it was great release anyway. Uh, it was first released with major feature it's Java module project Jigsaw. It was done to improve security and tight all class uh, relations which also able us clean up all relation between classes and if user want to use glink and only want to use only subset of classes, they can select these classes modules and ship JDK, uh, which is much smaller than full blown JDK, which includes code which never used. Uh, we, there was a very uh, war handle. Uh, when we work on that, we also want to improve. Uh, usage of some uh, API, which is internal, especially some is can save. People, we say it's uh, not supported for internal use, but people use it a lot. So we decided uh, that it shouldn't be this way. We introduced new GDK internal APIs, which strictly use only for GDK, and for people who want to low level access to fields and other uh, to object, Java object, we introduce it var handles. We also introduced G shell, which is very interesting. When you enter it, you can simply type Java uh, code and it will execute for you. We introduced compact string. We know that uh, by default, uh, string encoded uh, 16, uh, but mostly use ASCII, which is can be encoded in a bit, and this is uh, improvement done to reduce almost in half the size of a string if it's detected that only default encoding is used. There was several new port contributed by OpenJDK community at that release, and also 
ahead of time uh, compilation. There were several general hotspot JVM improvement, and also Intel contributed several measure improvement for x86 uh, code generation, especially new IVX 512 instructions. They will, they will use for important intrinsic like uh, string compare and array equals. And uh, this is least other features which was added. And as I say, it's, we can consider general K9 as measure release, but it was only short term supported release. End of life was March 2018. Next release was GDK 10, which was released se seven months ago. Uh, this is new release cadence. Each six months we release new GDK version. And new feature was uh, local variable time interface, new garbage collector interface. Uh, G1 was significantly improved, uh, particularly uh, we added parallel full DC collection. We open applica application class data sharing, uh, which was a close commercial feature before. A year ago on Java 1, we said in Keynote that we open all commercial features and we follow this promise and open ahead of time. Uh, uh, application class data sharing was one of such steps. Uh, class data sharing is simply during training run, you record all classes, use the application and create image of uh, class data which dump on disk and next time execute, you load it, and so you don't need to load and parse jar, uh, jar files, models, and so on. So it's greatly improved performance of startups uh, up to 15%, 15-20%. Great feature. Uh, there was also Intel introduced heap allocation on alternative memory device, and we will talk about this. And we added new experimental JIT compiler, uh, Java-based Graal, Oracle Labs work on this already for something like six or seven years. And this is our plan currently to uh, make it to see if, uh, how it will work and maybe replace our old C++ based C2 server JIT compiler. Uh, there was several general optimization from which I will point out uh, loop stream mining contributed by Red Hat, which helped with low pause GC when uh, we have optimization C2 call it counting loop, but count, uh, where we don't have support, a safe point where uh, code should pause when uh, GC need to do collection. And if you have a lot of execution in loop body, uh, and even if VM uh, ask, uh, GC ask for st to stop to save point, it can still be executed for a long time, uh, which increase pauses uh, when uh, other part of uh, VM wait when compiled code stop. To avoid this, this loop stream mining introduced, uh, instead of one, uh, loop without self point, we create nested loop with less iteration than external loop which have self point. So you, it significantly reduce uh, pause time when JC uh, wait for pause. Uh, X86 optimization was vectorization of the move, mass secured is an FMA, and we will talk about this. JK10 um, also short term release, which is end of September, uh, end of life. And finally, we come to GDK11. G GDK11 is long time support release. We will support for several years, and we just released it less than months ago. Uh, a lot of new features what, uh, was pushed there. Uh, I would say two new Java uh, GC collector was pushed. I would uh, point out uh, ZGC, 
This is Oracle Future GC, and there are talk about this uh, uh, on Wednesday. And last point, it's flight recorder, which is also was commercial features before and we open it. Uh, from here, I want to point, learn single fire source code program. What is this? It's uh, Java follow what other languages do when you have simply interpreted source code and execute at the same time. So with this, it will allow you to do that. You don't need to go for small program, for college, for schools, for people start learning uh, Java. It simply can execute this is this way. Total number of Hansons about 500. And from x86 optimization, uh, there was several uh, optimization done, and mostly new instruction added. And here it's data, so we will support for six years, five years, and even, yeah, even if you couldn't stay in support. Um, so this is general observation of GDK 10, 11, and 9, new features. And we will talk now about more about in detail 686 improvement. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Vivek, I work for Intel. Uh, as Vladimir mentioned, a lot of work has been put in JDK 9 and uh, with a faster uh, release cadence. Uh, as and when the features get available in JDK 10 and 11, we put many features into that and uh, we'll be doing uh, the same for the next releases. Uh, so I'll be talking about uh, mo more deeply in into vectorization then various intrinsic performances, um, FMA, Base64. Uh, for all the uh, performance collections, I used uh, Platinum 8180, uh, which is a Skylake-based uh, two-socket server, um, and JDK 11 and 10 uh, on Red Hat 7.4. Um, so for the vectorization, uh, we noticed that uh, for the small element vectors, such as byte and short, uh, they were not able to use the full vector width. Um, the earlier code was generated using XMM registers instead of ZMM registers, uh, even uh, for, for even for byte and short. So we we did a subword analysis uh, and then extended the max vector size uh, for such types. And now in the code snippet, in the generated code, we can see that uh, a vector. Uh, byte add can use ZMM register. Uh, so we see quite a bit of performance gain with that. Um, and we can uh, turn this option on and off using uh, use subword for max vector option. We uh, had optimized vectorized mismatch already and we further improved uh, array compare and uh, buffer compare using vectorized mismatch on the uh, on the notion that most of the strings most of the time strings are not equal so the mismatch occurs at the first element itself so we bail out by comparing first element and just with that uh, improvement we see quite a bit of performance gain uh, more than 2x so 100% is actually optimized vectorized mismatch and then uh, with that small uh, change, we see 2x kin with JDK 11. So the change is made in JDK 11 on top of uh, JDK 10 improvements. Um, square root is one of the important function used in math uh, from the math library. And we uh, generated a vector square root uh, instruction for the function uh, or the code snippet given in the first uh, right block. So it uses superword uh, loop unrolling and, and a superword analysis uh, to generate the vector square root instruction. And with that, we actually see quite a bit of gains around 
uh, 6x for double and around 7x for floats. Um, we improved uh, our intrinsics uh, with AVX5 and 2. So most of the intrinsics had AVX2 and then we ch uh, changed those intrinsics to use AVX5 and 2. So I've listed a couple of uh, important um, intrinsics in that. Uh, some of those are belong from string class. Some of those belong from array support or basically arrays the class. So with vectorized mismatch, uh, we see um, around 70% uh, gain uh, by using AVX512 over AVX2. Uh, um, I'll talk about FMA, that is uh, Fuse Multiply Add. We all know that uh, Java semantics uh, doesn't allow fusing, um, you know, f uh, multiply and followed uh, add operation, uh, followed by that, uh, and to generate FMA instruction. So in JDK 9, um, FMA API was introduced, uh, which actually generates results by imitating the fused uh, multiply and add operation. So that uh, API, we, we, we wrote an intrinsic for that, and then that uh, API generates uh, FMA instruction. Later on in uh, JDK 10, we vectorize that FMA uh, intrinsic, uh, and then we see, see quite a bit of performance in, with that. So I have performance data on the next slide, but basically FMA is very useful for uh, various linear, linear algebra functions in HPC and machine learning. So um, it's like a basic building block in, in those workloads. Uh, so I have a small code snippet where we can see uh, the S dot base is basically a normal way of writing a, a FMA, uh, fuse multiply add. And if we use the FMA, um, F FMA API uh, for dot product, uh, then that is also given at the small code function below that. And uh, with JDK 10, we see a scalar FMA uh, instruction getting generated. And uh, we further, we can further, um, you know, vectorize that function um, by, you know, sharding the, uh, the array uh, and uh, explicitly unrolling the, the loop. Um, and then uh, we can see uh, 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 packed FMA instructions are getting generated there. And we see quite a bit of uh, gains uh, with, the, um, with the vector, ins uh, vector instructions. So, uh, so idea, there, uh, we could further improve the auto vectorizer, you know, so that we don't have to unroll and shard the loop uh, the way I have shown here in the code snippet. Um, and also we can use vector API to you know, write um, this code in a different way uh, and use vector instructions. So that I will show later, uh, talk about it later. Mm. Um, Base64 is used in, uh, in the media, such as uh, you know, HTTP headers. And uh, it's basically, uh, we, we intensified the, the encoder, which converts uh, the ASCII string uh, to base64 um, format. So we have the AVX512 best intrinsic for that, and we um, intensified that uh, encode function for base64. And with that, uh, we see quite a bit of gains, uh, more than 2x with, with that intrinsic. And if you don't use the intrinsic, uh, there is not much gain. Um, so. Going forward, uh, we also enabled uh, persistent memory for Java. Uh, there are a couple of ways we can use persistent memory. Uh, so there I showed uh, some of the ways here. And uh, so what is a whole heap on Java? So we can put um, the whole heap or complete heap, including young Jane and old Jane on uh, persistent memory. And uh, this is very good when there is you know, multi uh, tenant JVMs uh, where, when there are a couple of JVMs on the system are running and um, the JVM doesn't have any uh, latency issues, then we can keep that uh, JVM uh, heap onto you know, persistent memory. And uh, that gives us a low write memory bandwidth. Uh, and, uh, but that's a requirement. Um, and for that, we added a flag, allocate heap at, and you can uh, use the mount point for, to specify the persistent memory. 
Uh, another usage of persistent memory is uh, just putting the old generation on, on uh, persistent memory. So uh, young gen stays on DRAM and uh, old gen on persistent memory. And this is very good for uh, workloads uh, like HBase or new NoSQL kind of uh, uh, workloads where you know we have very long-lived objects and they stay on uh, old uh, they, they they go into old gen and stay onto persistent memory and that provides large capacity of uh, you know cache and um, increase hit rate so we have another flag for that called allocate old gen at and then we can specify mount point for that and and then uh, with that option we can put all the old gen onto uh, persistent memory uh, third option or third way is uh, for using persistent memory is using uh, direct byte buffer in volatile mode. So we can um, use file channel map uh, to do that. And um, there are some uh, limitations with that. There is a direct byte buffer size limitation and it also goes through serialization and deserialization. Um, so I have the code snippet where uh, we allocate the memory um, and uh, then we map it using file channel map. And then we can read and write uh, to persistent memory using direct byte buffer. Um, another way of uh, using uh, direct byte buffer uh, is through JNI, uh, through memkind library. Um, and then memkind alloc is the function to allocate a block of memory on persistent memory. And we can uh, access that memory using new di direct uh, byte buffer mechanism um, into Java to access uh, persistent memory. Uh, we have put a lot of effort in vector API. Uh, this is a new programming paradigm where you can explicitly uh, write vector programs in Java. So uh, there is a code snippet on the left side, which is a scalar uh, addition loop of two arrays. And uh, the same loop ca can be written using explicit vectors. Uh, so that the code snippet is on the right side. So where we explicitly create vectors from the array and add those two vectors and put it back into the memory. So there are some uh, places where auto vectorizer can, uh, doesn't work. We cannot vectorize that kind of code, uh, like using auto vectorizer. But the programmer know that this uh, particular program can be uh, vectorized. So for them, there is a, a power to write vector programs. Um, so this uh, project belongs to Project Panama right now, and it's a JEP uh, 338. It's a candidate. In, it's in the candidate stage right now. You can uh, try or uh, download the source from the Panama Vector Intrinsics branch. Uh, try it out. Uh, use it for your use cases. Uh, give us your feedback on that. So there is a detailed talk tomorrow uh, at 1:30 p.m. Uh, at Code One. Uh, so uh, you can ask more questions and uh, have a look at more um, use cases and uh, f uh, you know. Uh, data with performance tomorrow for that. Um, we all know that I/O is buffered uh, uh, through kernel, uh, through file system cache in Java. So it uses DRAM for that, and Direct I/O is a, f a feature that modifies the API for those I/O, uh, where we can bypass the kernel. So we can uh, bypass the page system cache, uh, page cache and uh, directly re read write from storage to uh, user memory. Uh, with this, we have seen uh, quite a bit of reduction in kernel time and uh, increase in the disk bandwidth uh, with that. So direct IO API support is available from JDK 10. And uh, there is a link given below where there is a, a more um, detailed information about that feature, that how to use that feature. Um, so going forward, uh, similar to direct IO, uh, this is the work in progress and um, it's using uh, remote direct memory access. That also uh, you know, enhances the OS kernel sockets uh, where we can write from 
one application's memory to another application's memory over the network, and it avoids uh, kernel uh, time or usage of kernel time. So it gives high throughput and uh, gives a low latency networking. So it's a JEP337, uh, and uh, you can find more information on that on the link given below at the slide. So there is a detailed talk about the same uh, on Wednesday. Um, at 1.30 uh, and uh, called as um, Programming Modern Storage Devices with JDK 10. Um, with that, uh, I would like to hand it back to uh, Vladimir, uh, who will talk about more upcoming features. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> we spoke too fast, I think, which will leave a lot of time for questions. Um, Currently, we are working on JDK 12. We started to work on it in the middle of summer when we already uh, finished and started testing JDK 11. Um, we, there are several already JAPS features which are already targeted. One of them, uh, some time ago, there was duplication that Oracle internally worked on ARM64 port. And at the same time, Red Hat also contributed, as I said before, in GDK 9 ARM64 port as OpenGDK project. And we thought that maybe we will have advantage, better performance, but um, all end up that uh, we decided it's maybe not worth it, and as a result, uh, we decided to go with uh, open port. And what port we have before, it's only, <coughs> we have 32-bit and 64-bit ports, so we leave only 32-bit port, which open community still want to support. Another feature is default class data sharing. I talked to you before about application class data sharing, which simply dump uh, collected class data to disk and reload on startup next time. And this one, this feature, uh, pre-generate system classes data from Java-based and other models, and store it is, uh, on disk or in JDK directory. And when you launch, Every time you launch Java, it will be used. Uh, so far, total number of enhancements we contributed to 10. It's much less to 11. I think we have number 500 contribution new enhancement 11 because people know that it will be long supported release. So people want to uh, push as many as possible features there because they will be used for a long time. Uh, from optimization in hotspot, I want to mention um, uh, optimization which calculate uh, trihotomy calculation, uh, optimize uh, division by two, and also we refactor it uh, garbage collector interface. It's common interface we introduce in, in 10 which can be used by any garbage collector, like I pointed before, it's G1, it's already default, but then Epsilon GC and ZGC. And in future, uh, it will be Shenandoah GC, which Red Hat contributing. Uh, we did measure and write AVX 5.12 implementation uh, in GDK 12. We uh, because the uh, original implementation was bug prone, as we found, uh, complex, and uh, we simplified it. So we're currently testing it. And JDK 12 will be, again, short-lived, and will be outdated uh, in September next year. Talking about far future, currently OpenJK community and us, Oracle, 
working on next features, it's uh, VXA Vector API, which become more important, especially it's look like for machine learning implementation. If we want to use Java for that, we need that. Uh, limited speculative execution, this is work to address uh, uh, specter uh, issue, which everyone know. And RDMA network circuit, which is VXA, then GVM constants to improve uh, JIT compilation, different intrinsic, uh, and other uh, Java improvement. And also, we expect Shenandoah and other low-pulse low GC will be added. I want to point now to long-running projects we have. First is, it's not long, it's short, I would say. It's Project SCARA. It's idea, uh, not idea, uh, we are considering to move our source code management from Mercurial, which we use for a long time, I think it's more than 10 years, to Git, which is currently most popular, most used source code management. There is project for that, there is research uh, data. The main motivation is to attract developers, because currently software developers uh, more familiar with Git, and also simplify reviews, and also reduce time to download code. Currently, uh, Mercurial binaries blow up significantly, so it takes some time to do initial load. And moving to Git, it reduces time. Another project is Loom, which uh, Lightweight threads, we call it fibers. It's not hardware threads, but software threads. You can create thousands of them. And it's for purpose if you have some short work to do instead of uh, starting new hardware threads, we take a lot of time and request to system. Uh, just to do some small work instead, you can just create software thread, execute and return. Panama, it's a combination of different improvement, but main goal, uh, improve communication of Java code to the native code to native libraries. Next one is value types. It's part of Valhalla project. Uh, slogan is codes like class but work like int. The idea here is that everything, uh, most of the uh, data in Java are objects which come with overhead of headers where we record different metadata information about object. So it's uh, consumed quite a lot of memory and also uh, traffic and handling. And if you know about Java arrays of object, it's uh, essentially array of pointers which point to object which could be scattered uh, around Java heap and access to it, it will have a lot of cache misses. Instead, the proposed uh, special type value types, which you declare where you can operate on them on co like object in sources, but JIT compiler will operate on them as on register as values, and also you can pack them as simple values primitive in array, not like pointer array. We have several uh, early access builds already. Uh, you can uh, look there. Then there is Metropolis, uh, Java on Java. The idea is that currently hotspot use very outdated C++. Uh, I would say it's most like C++ objects. Uh, 
We don't use exceptions, C++ exception, other stuff. We only recently start, recently a few years, start use extensively templates. Before that, we didn't use it. The main reason was because we're running on different platforms and have to use different C++ compilers. Not all of them support uh, in the same degree features uh, we want. Uh, on the other hand, Java, its product we produce ourselves, we have control of it, and we can add features we need to that. So here come as experiment, let's see if we can write uh, at least JIT compiler, which is not directly involved in uh, code execution and throughput or latency, but uh, the most important thing is compilation time and quality of generated code. And the idea is let's use Java to write these JIT compilers. And Oracle Labs, as I say, spent uh, before spent several years already to write uh, to do that. And currently, it's, uh, this JIT compiler become very on pair with uh, current compiler we have. So this project Metropolis, it's a place where we do experiment with that. So uh, this is end of our talk and this call for action. Uh, now, questions. Okay. Can you go to Mark? Excuse me, you can come here. Yeah, uh, so um, the work is basically keeping the heap uh, on, the, on the persistent memory. So I think uh, whatever Java application provides uh, the security, uh, that is the security we have. And uh, I think there is still work going on, you know, measuring the performance. Uh, so uh, I, I don't have that much information on the performance right now. That's our aim, uh, but yeah, you can surely try with Vector API and uh, try to uh, put your uh, use cases into that. And then you can always contact us with the feedback that particular uh, case is not giving us the performance and we can work on you know, improving that. Thank you. Okay. Can we switch? Okay. You guys stop us. Yes. You guys continue to put out impressive number of enhancements into the, the, the JDK engine. To what extent are these, is there any improvement in the existing code base? And to what extent are they dependent on new hardware innovations and therefore likely to be dependent on what the hardware are required to use in Java? Um. I'm currently debating this, but uh, these guys want to put Vector API using SSC instructions. So it will work even on hardware which does not have AVX, which is 70 years old. Another? Okay.
So you have to use uh, no, you have to use new JDK which support it. Uh, I don't think you need to use uh, change your or recompile your code. So it's mostly dynamically checking by default uh, that if there are no implicit uh, asking for other UTF-A 16 usage, it will keep in UTF-A 8 encoding. But if you ask somewhere to use UTF-A 16 characters, uh, insert or add, then you can hit some bottleneck and degradation of performance because we have to convert strings which you modify and back to UTF-A 16 encoding. So, but by default, if you do nothing and use only ASCII, you don't need to re recompile your code. Any other questions? Thank you.